Our next speaker is Ambassador Jonas Hofstrom, who is the Ambassador and Senior Advisor for Trade Promotion from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Sweden. In his speech, his talk today will be about TTIP, a transatlantic bridge for worldwide gains. Thank you very much. And uh, Ambassador McCarthy, thank you for this very good initiative. I think we are, uh, we can't be enough active to really describe what is going on between the United States and Europe when it's come to trade. Uh, and of course, I've been to Lithuania many, many times. The first time was right after that Iceland, as the first nation in the world, recognized uh, Lithuania. And I was here with Carl Bildt when I saw Vytautis Landsbergis well trained behind sandbags in the parliament. That was 25 years ago. And since then, Lithuania is uh, well integrated in both the European and the transatlantic community which is good when there are cold winds blowing from the east. And of course, it's a particular honor for me to be here because I served as Swedish ambassador to the United States and I was actually present uh, in Congress when President Obama for the first time mentioned the prospects of an historic transatlantic trade deal in his 2013 State of the Union address. I have since followed that talks very closely. The Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, the official name, TTIP, was conceived in the midst of the most severe economic crisis since the Great Depression. Ironically, in times when free trade is needed the most, it is often the hardest things to do. Protectionism is often on the rise, when our economies are strained and when growth is stalling. The European Union and the United States resisted this trade restrictive path and instead set out to negotiate the largest bilateral free trade agreement in history. And of course, we all know that new technologies in combination with open trading systems represents the single strongest force for growth and development in the world. Just make me one detail about this. The International Broadband Commission recently said that by 2020, approximately 90% of the world's population will be covered by mobile broadband networks, supporting access to internet. And in combination with the free trade, you can make yourself the assumption that that will, will, make, will move the world. But that was also disappointing when, when President Obama made his speech, State of, of the Union speech, the lack of progress in the multilateral trade talks. The door around has gone on since 2001, and little has been then achieved. So these two things inject inject uh, force in the, in the world economy and also to, to try to get also the multilateral talks going but more importantly the bilateral things. So while pursuing TTIP, both the European Union and the United States wanted to set the possible standard for trade investment rules that could serve as a global benchmark. In short, the EU and the US were looking to be standard makers not standard takers. Both parties are also view TTIP as an opportunity to solidify, to, to strengthen the transatlantic partnership. But let me briefly elaborate on why TTIP is of such economic and political importance. Transatlantic trade is very sophisticated. The high level of integration between, between our economies is manifested in a large investment flows and regional value change that constantly interlinks companies from one side of the Atlantic to the other. Modern trade is globalized, is complex, and reliant on services and data flows and supported by millions of factors. Global value chains with components being produced 
assembled, shipped, marketed, and sold in several countries are today's reality. Trade policy must be adapted to this reality, and TTIP can enable leaps forward in this regard. Our inspirations and the dynamics of current transatlantic trade meant that we knew from the beginning that TTIP would not be focused on cutting tariffs only. The major benefits lies in addressing non-tariff barriers. This naturally poses a lot of challenges since the regulatory regime in the European Union and the United States are both well developed but in certain ways as we have heard, heard it before quite different. Still, I think that much can be done to reduce regulatory discrepancies without undermining high environmental, high environmental health or safety standards. Looking ahead, TTIP can also provide a solid framework to cooperate closely on future economic and regulatory issues, thereby hopefully avoiding unnecessary trade frictions down the road. But there's also an important global economic dimension to TTIP. TTIP can benefit not only the United States and the European Union, but also our trading partners around the world. Economic growth in the US and EU means greater demand by consumers and business of other countries' products. Greater alignment of standards and less red tape helps all companies regardless of where they are located. More broadly, the combined economic weight of the EU and the US represent an opportunity to address global trade issues. Through TTIP, we can aim to contribute to the development of global roles and principles such as level playing field and increased transparency. We also, of course, hope that TTIP will spur action on trade liberalization at the global level and we continue to push strong, strongly, as I said before, for WTO. And of course, we are happy over the last few weeks that we have been seeing breakthroughs that we hope will pave the way for important agreements on trade facilitation and environmental goods globally. Many primarily think of TTIP as an economic agreement, but we must not forget the economics, politics, and strategy are intertwined and, multi and reinforced in the transatlantic relationship. TTIP embodies and promotes many of our common values. Hence, the strategic and political importance of TTIP. It is both a milestone with which we mark the significance of our transatlantic friendship and a cornerstone on which we can build the future transatlantic partnership. As the 2005 Nobel laureate in economics, Thomas Schelling has said, trade is what most of international relations are about. For that reason, reason trade policy is national security policy. So where do we stand in the negotiations? Well, seven rounds have been concluded. These have mostly been of technical character, trying to hammer out what rules and regulations that consist, uh, constitute trade barriers and what we can do about them. This is, a, by the way, a necessary part of any trade negotiations. At the same time, I think it's fair to say that many had hoped that the negotiations would have been even more advanced of this stage. Now that the new European Commission has been installed with the Trade Commissioner Cecilia Malmström from Sweden, known as a strong supporter of free trade and open markets, and the US midterm elections held, we are expecting a significant in intensification of the talks. 2015 will be an extremely important year when tough political decisions will have to be made. A successful conclusion will require strong political support and leadership on both sides. And I don't know if you remember that, but when 
TTIP was launched on both sides of the Atlantic, the politicians said, leave the trade negotiations out of the picture and let us have, have it to have the, the, the prime ministers and the presidents top down to make the deal in the end of the day. Let's see if that will be a reality. It's also important to record that in the end, TTIP is not a pile of papers that we will sign and then just walk away. It must be a living agreement. It will require a continuous dialogue and regular updates. There will always be a risk of flawed implementation in a sector or of new regulations that create unexpected and unnecessary trade barriers. We also need to keep the door open as new technologies are developed. We must establish fora and mechanisms to prepare for these upcoming challenges. Let me add that the significance of TTIP is also evident in the public debate. We are in Europe experience an almost unprecedented interest in TTIP from the public, civil society organizations, and business and labor. A wide ranging and intensive debate on trade policy is a positive development. The debate suggests that there are many in favor of free trade in TTIP, but there are also many who have significant concerns. We must take these concerns seriously and make every effort to address them through transparency and open public dialogue. Engagement with stakeholders from all of the society will be even more important as we approach the finish line of ne negotiations. And just one note that the Commission recently um, uh, launched a public consultation about ISDS, the Investors State Dispute Settlement on TTIP. And that result will be presented in, uh, in a couple of I don't know, months. And so we can take that debate right on. In conclusion, my friends, we want nothing less than a high standard comprehensive agreement that creates opportunities and certainties for companies and citizens on both sides of the Atlantic. And I think that this is probably the last chance that we in Europe got to, tra tra to, to strengthen our transatlantic relations. We now see what is going up on in e Asia with figures of 7, 8, 9, 10 percent, with China leaving, leading the process. And if we fail to do this historic deal, then I think the United States will much more follow and benchmark and develop their strategic partnership with China. And that will go on for a very long time. And we of Europe must, must then say, sorry, we missed that opportunity to increase uh, trade, business, and more, most importantly, jobs uh, across the Atlantic. Thank you so much.